Welcome back to the Secret Society of Strangers podcast. I'm Lee, here with Josh and Jamie, as always. What up? <laughs> got two barnacles hanging off you. Right. Uh, I'm that is... I don't know who these people are. No, they just followed their home. just got home. They were sitting on my couch. <laughs> check their eyes. Make sure they're not black. What? Is it check their eyes. Make sure their eyes aren't black. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is my son, Noah, and his girlfriend, Libby. And they are here because two things. One, obviously, the number one reason is that they think I'm amazing, like, cool and <laughs> awesome and fun and just like the best. Get that on record. Yep. Okay. Yep. You. And so they were like, like, can we just come up and hang out? It's like, guys, I seriously, I can't again. <laughs> and, That's the fourth time this week. Yeah, but like, seriously, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> and, and then I was like, I'm doing the podcast tonight. And and t- turns out they really enjoyed the Moss Man. The and they just broke in and we're here when you started. And they were here start. when I got yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I can't say why. It's, nice. it's bordering on ridiculousness. I'm gonna have to start red. <laughs> so, what is the other reason that they are here? Oh, uh, because they like the Mothman prophecies. Yeah. So this episode is the Mothman. Now, I have been waiting since literally we formed this podcast to cover the Mothman. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like you've just been foaming at the mouth for it. It's it's my favorite. I love all the. I'm going to call them legs. Like Mothman story has like legs. It just branches or branches. It branches off everywhere. Mm. Um, and I actually mentioned to you guys a couple of days ago, I was rereading the Mothman prophecies. And the second time through, it's a real hard read because within the first like four chapters, mm. you already want to go on like 10 different rabbit holes because he's dropping all these names mm. and, and you're like, oh shit. Okay. So I got to go check out this in Connecticut. I got to go check out this. And it's too much. But, and you're talking about the book, and it's called The Mothman. The book. Prophecy, yep. Right? Yeah, John uh, book. Yep, John Keel's book. And it's the same, not the same, but same name as the movie, not same premise, really. Okay. Uh, it's a little different in the movie. I have a question just right out of the box. I'm Let's sure go. We'll get to it. But, you know, I personally, I, I don't have a depth of knowledge about Mothman prophecies. I watched Hellier, that kind of comes up in it. Um, so I kind of know exactly. a little bit about it. Um, but, can you just give me like a real quick 60 second recap of like, what are the prophecies? Like what are the, the actual prophecies? There, oh, there so, are no prophecies. It's just, that okay, was just so the name of like, it. No. In the year 2020. No, 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 but really uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Too, around but by your <laughs> John Keel's like hypothesis for this whole thing. Yeah. Or part of his hypothesis was that he's in some way, predicting or trying to warn people of imminent doom disaster things like that so the prophecies is more related to the fact that yeah the eyes the eyes the eyes (laughs) Uh, so good i feel like everybody knows the language (laughs) no you don't know you're in the dark so perfect it's it's good (laughs) so you get (laughs) you get to hear the whole story yeah from like the beginning um So I guess I, I guess you could tell we all kind of love the Mothman. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was right to start this without jumping into um, Indrid Cold. And Indrid Cold, Jamie, I know you'll know is familiar from Hellier. Yeah, um, that's, that's really the only kind of bits that I know about. Mm-hmm. Really. But again, it's crazy that, what, how many years later is Hellier? This is in the 60s. That's right. like early 2000s. So you're talking, what, 40 years, 45 years? And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. his name's still popping up somehow? Hmm. And I'll uh, say definitely to anyone listening, these two, they haven't watched it. If you have not watched Hellier, go watch Hellier. Seasons mm-hmm. one and two. It's so good. Isn't there a new one coming out? Uh, they just had a documentary on like a, um, a haunted piece. Mm. Uh, but it's oh, yeah, so. a few months ago, and it's mm-hmm. independent of the the Hellier series. The crone, the yeah, the, yeah, the exactly. Catskills crone or whatever that thing is. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. And we'll start with Indrid Cold and a gentleman named Woody Derenberger. Mm-hmm. Um, Woodrow is his full name. Um, 
he was a sewing machine salesman from Mineral Wells, West Virginia. He was driving home one night and at that point is when his life completely changed. He came in contact with a UFO on his way home that night. Um, so it was November 2nd in 1966. It was around 7.30. Woody was on his way home. Like I said, he was driving through Parksburg, West Virginia. Um, he had a what he thought was a car originally coming up very fast behind him. But this light passed over to the left side of his car, but higher than his car, and stopped blocking him from going any further on the road. Uh, any questions? Everybody got the visuals? Oh, yeah. Yudra Derenberg. So that's the dude. That's the place. This is the specific place. He looks like an aggressive salesman. Like right? Just not take no for an answer. <laughs> That's so funny that you said that. That's so funny. I, so I, I know I talked to you guys. I've been doing this for a long time, this one episode. And I brought it up to my wife one of the times. And it was like, I think it's because back then, like being that kind of salesman was like a, like you had to be the toughest salesman out there. Like <laughs> it was common for like a salesman just to show, show up to your door and be like, hi yeah. ma'am, do you want to buy a vacuum? Uh, like, right. you know, do you want like Tupperware? Hey, no for an answer. I don't know. Maybe he had that rough tumble that the housewives liked. <laughs> and they're like, ooh, Woody. Can't wait for you to come over with yeah. the sewing we machine. Had a, we Show had me that sewing like, machine, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> like, Woody, why do you sell so many sewing machines? <laughs> he does have, he it's have baby good. mamas sprinkled all around, which, fun fact, speaking of baby mamas, mm. um, West Virginia is the birthplace of Mother's Day. Mm. <laughs> random a ass fact. Random <laughs> fact. So random. I know. <laughs> um, full of random knowledge. So this ship, Derenberger describes, it looked like a kerosene lamp on its side. It hovered in the road in front of him about 12 inches off the ground. And he then says a being, man-shaped being, walked out of the ship and approached his car. Um, he then says that this being looked at him, grinning, his mouth didn't move, and he asked him to roll down the window. Well, I would not roll down that window. <laughs> that or maybe he was controlled to roll out? down the window. Right? Who knows? He... Darren Berger describes the guy as around six feet tall. He looked like he was about 35 years old, had olive complexion. He had a dark brown hair and he wore a glossy metallic coat. Um, and like he said, he was just grinning at him without moving his lips. Um, he asked Woody why he was frightened and he told him that he shouldn't be frightened of him. And he tried to assure him that he was not going to harm him or they weren't going to harm him. Yeah, that, that just good. doesn't jive, man. <laughs> you know, he's just going to be like, oh, I'm on a table and there's all these probes in my ass. Yep. What's That's happening? When it begins. <laughs> so this weird guy asked Woody what his name was. So he introduced himself as Woody. And then this person introduced themselves as Cold. Indrid Cold. Okay. Um, he explained to Woody that he was a searcher from his planet Lanulos. No, it's Lanulos. Cool. So Lanulos is the planet that uh, Indrid Cold claims to have come from. We'll get into that oh, too. Okay, okay. Um, the conversation. I had a PE teacher named Miss Janulus. <laughs> maybe, she, maybe she was an alien. Maybe Did she wear she clothes? It's like, oh. so scary. She's the scariest teacher I've ever had in my whole life. See? So maybe. No, they shouldn't be scary. She's definitely. Scary. Oh my God. Yeah. She was mean. <laughs> Lanulus and Janulus. And you still became a teacher. Look at that. Look at you. PE teacher. She used to run us. We were what does that mean? They're not teachers? Oh. Yeah. PE. Yeah. PE teacher. Gym that's, yeah. like just a, yeah. that's just a job description they can fit easily. Because like they're super weird all the time anyway. So aliens just like, hey, what do you want to be? I'll be a gym teacher this time again. This was super easy last time. 
No one asked any questions. I got a whistle. Real big fan of this <laughs> wig. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but Derenberger says the conversation lasted about 10 minutes. Um, Cold tells him that we eat, we breathe, we sleep, and we even bleed as you do. And before leaving, he said, we'll see you again. He then got back in the ship, door closed up, and the ship peaced out. <laughs> I want to know, like, how many people is the we? How many people do they have from Lanulos? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Every gym teacher, apparently. <laughs> This <laughs> is it's just a bunch of people no, with short ass shorts on. It's <laughs> doing aggressively <laughs> deep like lunges. It's all making sense. It's climbing ropes and shit. Um, all right. So figuring everything out. Derenberger was understandably frightened. He went home and he immediately told his wife and reported this to the police. So like unlike a lot of people, like he was instantly like, you guys gotta know about this. So, like, during the media frenzy, this other guy came up to him and said that he sort of saw, like, he or he thought he saw a figure trying to flag him down on the same route, Route 77. Mm -hmm. And then multiple witnesses reported to, like, you know, the police and the media seeing, like, lights and fluttering vehicles in the sky mm -hmm. that night. Mm -hmm. So that just, like, lines up with uh, our boy Woody's uh, story. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that like multiple people saw and described the same thing that all yeah. these people saw. Mm -hmm. It was a lot, and actually, John Keel goes around and interviews a lot of those people, and mm -hmm. it is a very uh, like prominent flap, like they call them UFO flaps, and like there was a large area of people that had reported things that they saw in the sky that night. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and so, essentially, the book then is. Is Derringer or Damberger, whatever. No. Yeah. no. So, again, well, this is a long story. We'll get to all of it. But the book, Sorry. Mothman Prophecies, yeah. chronicles a reporter, uh -huh. not not necessarily Keel. Oh, oh, okay. But it's Keel. <laughs> yeah. Um, gotcha. I think he uses Klein in the book and the movie, yeah. maybe. Um, but it's him being like almost synchronicity to the Mothman prophecies gotcha. okay. from doing other interviews and research on UFO flaps in like Connecticut and other areas. Gotcha. So it's more how like they all came together and were involved. And he does like blanket canvas interviews with everybody in the town. And like he has weird interactions with people who think they've seen him before or think he is a man in black. And yeah, it's a good book. Definitely. Men in Black showed up so much during all this, though, too. Okay. Yeah, they did. I feel like I need to read it. It feels like it pulls together a lot of the stuff that we've talked about. It does. Yeah. That's why I did Men in Black before we did this one. Mm -hmm. we, we had a plan. You did! Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yes. We, we <laughs> What'd she say? I'm sorry. I have a copy of the book. Oh, nice. Oh, Perfect. Nice. Let me borrow it. There you go. They're just coming up with excuses to come back. <laughs> <laughs> the old, I left my book at your place. <laughs> uh, so this, right? This story quickly gained media attention on November 3rd. So like, I think it's like the next day, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. The next day he goes on um, a TV interview and officially is interviewed by an Air Force representative in like a police thing. I have a little snippet. Of the actual real thing. Mm hmm All right, so this is Woody Derenberger being interviewed after his encounter with Indrid Cold. Is this the Project Blue Book guy? Because that's who he looks like. <gasps> the guy interviewing him? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, fuck yeah. Is it really? Yep. Oh, nice. About 47, there was a car past me, overtaking me from behind. And following closely behind this car was this unidentified flying object. And as the car ahead, or the car behind passed me, this object was following close behind it, and it swerved directly in front of my truck, turning crosswise. And when it turned crosswise, it slowed down. It started slowing, not abruptly or too fast, but it gave me plenty of time to step on my brakes and slow down with it. But it forced me to come to a complete stop. 
As soon as I had stopped, there was a door opened in the side of this vehicle, and this man stepped out and came directly to me, or came to the truck. He walked to the right-hand side of the truck, and he told me to roll down the window. He asked me to roll down the window on my right-hand side of my truck, and I had done what he asked. And this man stood there, and he, he first asked me, what I was called, and I knew he meant my name, and I told him my name. And uh, he asked me, he said, uh, why are you frightened? He said, don't be frightened, we wish you no harm. He said, we mean you no harm, we wish you only happiness. So, like, day after, this guy is out there in the public, comfortable enough to talk about it with everybody and share. Um which is, again, I think it's a little unusual for, like, UFO sightings. Usually there's that period of what to do. Like, is this real? Are people going to believe me? Do I tell anybody? And then you tell, like, one person and see how they react. But he's, like, out there. Went for it. Yeah, and then you have, like, all these other people saying that they saw stuff, too. So it was just, like, a big UFO flap. Mm -hmm. Why they call it flap. It's a weird term for it. I don't know. It must be. It probably has some meaning. Yeah, probably. That we are too dumb to know. <laughs> it's just used for UFOs, though. <laughs> but if a butterfly wa- flaps its wings in Japan, then it causes a tsunami. That shit's crazy. We're not ready for that right now. No, no. no. We haven't graduated to that shit yet. Flaps its wings in West Point, West Virginia. And a bridge <laughs> falls. And, a bridge <laughs> falls. <laughs> and the Golden Gate Bridge falls. <laughs> <laughs> If a mothman wa- uh, flaps its wings, does it really make a sound? Ooh. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it's, there's they talk about that. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily flap, which is kind of weird. Uh, so, like I said, he went on the interview. Over the next few months, Derenberger claims that he had multiple visits with injured cold. He said that cold even took him to his planet, Lanulos. Uh, he said that Lanulos was located 14.6 light years away from the galaxy Ganymede. Uh, according to Derenberger, Lanulotians are similar to humans in form. They live in a utopian society where there's no war, no crime. They all talk telepathically, so there's no lying, and they do not wear clothes. I like it. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm hearing no downsides. Right? They... <laughs> They go on to say that they have three seasons instead of four. They plant, they harvest. I wonder if it's winter that they don't have. Like, if maybe there's no death. Maybe. Society. Planting and harvest in the cold season. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Wait, so this guy, he went in the spaceship? He went in the spaceship. And he also claims that, like, besides, I I skipped the, like, other places. He says that, like, the Ingrid took him to places on Earth, like, quickly. Like, they went... Like he's so the first time he comes in contact with Ingrid and he's offering to take him anywhere in the world. For whatever reason, Woody decides that the Amazon jungle is where he wants to go. Um, and then boom, they're in the Amazon jungle. From the Amazon jungle, Ingrid, I believe the conversation goes something like Ingrid asked him, like, I can take you to my planet, would you want to go? And Darren Berger was like, Yeah, and then that's when they went to his planet. Whole new market for sewing machines. Right? <laughs> like, no one's wearing clothes here. It's a <laughs> fucking miracle. <laughs> and the slaps top a sewing machine. I'm gonna sell up. A- yeah, right. He just sells sewing machines. Now everyone's got clothes. And then they're gonna have war and crime. Yeah, right? Oh, the soon put clothes on, they start killing. And then there we, we go. The first thing, Woody, Woody Burger. Like Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden you know the first thing they did was that, well the first thing that they were were ashamed of their that's funny like, see synchronicities see? i was going to talk to you guys because i don't know how to do it and i don't know how to do it without like offending the entire world but yeah. i want to do like the creation story i want to oh, do an yeah. episode on the creation story yeah well like one of my topics is the book of enoch so like yeah that would be yeah that, i think that's Perfect. a wonderful story and i so for me, you know, I'm an English teacher. And so I took a lot of classes about the Bible because it's not, we. I didn't study it as like, this is the word of God. It was 
literature as like a, you know yeah, a literature. scholarly text yeah there's so many allusions and stuff in literature so i think approaching it in that way is how you don't get anybody upset is that you don't approach it from a religious point of view it's more from like here's you know let's just I, do it written and take it as a metaphor i want to just more take it apart and look at like you said like there's a lot of allegory there's a lot of metaphor yeah i want to figure all that stuff out or mm -hmm. talk about it with it yeah mm -hmm. i mean that's a very interesting you know way of looking at it though yeah it'll be fun they get their clothes and that that maybe is why they never have war and famine and they that. don't have to uh they don't they're not ashamed fight for anything yeah yeah and if you I, communicate telepathically that's they're no the lies. big thing Yep. Yeah, it's hard to lie and be deceitful if you mm -hmm. just know what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a very human way to look at it. Like that's our first thought. Mm -hmm. But if you like sit on that for a second, the bigger thought is I don't have to want for anything. I don't have to have my fellow beings question my emotions. Yeah. So like, you know, if you're in a relationship or you're close with someone, you're working with someone like, and they're feeling a certain way, like they don't have to worry about being like, oh, yeah, that guy tell Debbie about like, not like right. making the right breakfast this morning or whatever. Yeah. And like, you're just bummed, yeah. like, you know, or your coffee spilled. Uh, like, she's wearing clothes no. again. She's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> they go, no, we got to get her out of those clothes. She's going to start a war. So, you know, like when your energy's interact with one another that it like makes beautiful like sounds and colors mm -hmm. and if it if the sound is off then you know that it's not quite the right fit like in friendships or whatever that there's something like disharmony to work on but, but yeah, yeah i don't like it i think that maybe we should do that i think that's eventually what's going to end up happening no matter what i think so Darren too, Berger we... write a book about his uh trip he to did Lanulose. he wrote a book called visitors of lanulos it looks like the Joker. It does. It's very Joker. I'll be honest with you guys. He he looks CIA to me. I was gonna say Ooh. something about that later on. Not like the way mm. that he looks CIA, Seriously. but like this whole thing looks, could be like a CIA. He looks military. Op. He looks like this is planted information. And uh, with the What's information right coming out today, that Lou Elizondo is definitely a remote viewer for our military would not surprise me if this was information that was gleaned from some sort of like astral traveling kind of session. I mean, this was all like during like disclosure. the Cold War and stuff like that and like Russia and everything. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like it could have, they could have just been testing to see like how the American people, like could the be. CIA could have been testing to see how the American people would face like Russian UFO disinformation, you know, oh, now they're all, now everybody's saying that that's what area, uh, the Roswell crash was was just two or three deformed Russian children. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> That'd be so crazy. I don't know about that. I know. So he was uh, in the military. Good eye. He was. See? That's fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, then maybe uh, he's just up. some semi machine salesman. <laughs> maybe he's really selling like yeah. machine guns. Yep. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he may have been. Yeah, he's probably. Was there any like traveling salesmen that were serial killers? I don't know. We'll it's top way of off head. topic, but like, yeah. But I'm sure it would that's be a like good question. Number. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like truckers, you know. Oh um, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, there's one going around right now in Texas. Oh really? They think they're active and like there's like people popping up everywhere. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so he wrote the book. Um, he actually wrote another book later on. His daughter also wrote a book because his oh, daughter his claims, yeah, his daughter claims that she had come in contact with not only Indrid but other people from Landulos. Damn, kind of crazy. Kind of father just lets his daughter around a bunch of naked aliens. sewing machine machine sales. <laughs> 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 to make it alien. <laughs> um, morals. Josh, that's some of your finest work. <laughs> he did face a lot of skepticism and a lot of ridicule. He lost jobs. He was harassed. Um, like I said, his wife and children reported seeing injured cold as well. Really? Um, and for a long time, the family received like strange or threatening phone calls. Or they pick up the phone and make a weird noise. 
Men in uh, black shit. Yep. Um, and then he also ultimately ended up getting divorced. And I don't know how much of the this story has to do with the divorce, but it's still... She probably got tired of hearing of it and mm-hmm. getting all these weird phone calls and shit. You keep going to Lanulos, seeing all those naked women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where, I know you got another bitch on Lanulos. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're selling sewing machines. Yeah, okay. right. Okay, you, you haven't sold any because they're sitting in that spare bedroom. <laughs> um, you go to Lanulos. You never take a fucking sewing machine with you. That'd be so funny. I uh, wonder if there's any reason that that family in particular was targeted. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a good question. Machines. And they just really need it. For- you're crazy. They need it. That's a good question for a lot of the contacts between, um, especially when they're reoccurring. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some of the guests we've talked to too. Targeted it's, individuals. Yeah, or it's generational, it's in their family. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Diana Pasalka, she talks about that in one of her, her books that she published is that when you get really, really high up, they are, they train their kids from very young. Like, who's the who are the ones that you're going to trust the most would be your children. Yeah. And so yeah. kids indoctrinate them. Family business when you are high up in that kind well, of. I'm glad my dad wasn't that high up. That we know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, when we have Evan on, I told you guys his dad yeah, was an FBI. He's a sewing machine self. <laughs> <laughs> That was only his part-time job, guys. Jeez. <laughs> we didn't need to bring it up. So all right. uh, our boy John Keel, he wrote, you know, as we all know, the Mothman prophecies. He investigated uh, Woody's claims. And in Keel's book, it mentions that Woody and his encounters with injured cold, linking them to other strange occurrences around West Virginia, West Virginia during the same time period. Yeah, um, Kiel comes up later again um, when we're actually talking about Mothman. So he's uh, all over it. Yeah, he's all over the place. So we'll we'll hear his name again. So um, how then? How did Woodrow's story end? He kind of faded into obscurity. He kept his story until the day he died. Maybe yeah. he didn't die. He went to Lanulos. Maybe you imagine. He supposedly passed away at the age of 73 in 1990. All right. Knowledge. Drum roll. Are we ready for the man himself? Yeah. Is he a man? Is what? he a moth? I don't know. <laughs> Is he more man than moth or moth than man? I don't know. So you're going to have to ask him. We got to go to the festival and find him. There we go. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get him on as a special guest like we got. Uh, uh, that's the goal. No, that, would be that would be exciting. That is the goal. Before we actually get completely into Mothman himself, <laughs> there's some stuff I want to talk to because I think it's kind of relevant. So about two centuries before the Mothman in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, it was a site of a bloody um, battle between Americans and Native Americans, or American settlers and Native Americans. They basically made a bunch of treaties like Americans did, broke a bunch of those treaties, The Native Americans were then kind of enlisted to fight against the Americans by different factions of English and uh, other armies. Again, promises were made. As this was happening, one chief called Chief Cornstalk went to the American settlers and like said, if we don't like find a solution to this, like my other tribesmen are going to start taking the Englishmen up on their like offers to attack you um when they did that they captured him and put him into a cell to like hopefully stop the attacks while he was in the cell he was actually treated fairly well he helped them draw maps and like figure out the area he was unfortunately killed because while out doing whatever they were doing some of them colonists were killed by Native Americans and basically another group of soldiers came back to the fort and was like took it out on all the captive Native Americans. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, they killed him and his son and as he was dying he cursed 
Point Pleasant in West Virginia. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's so like a, a lot of people have said that like the curse is like why there's so many so much blip, like bad shit that's happened there. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. There's a lot of tragedy. Um we'll get into that too. I actually found the and it's kind of morbid. I found like the West Virginia like disaster list. Oh, it's it's so long. <laughs> wow. And it's like they're crazy disasters. They're not like little oh, you know, well, there was like a fire that, in the schoolhouse. Like, no, it's like there was like that whole train that like got derailed and like polluted the water, mm. and then like all the coal mining shit. Like, yes. just don't drink the water down there. Fires, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll get into Mothman now. So let's ba- let's start with like the basic characteristics of this man slash moth. Yeah. So, based on numerous reporting reports and sightings, the Mothman is described, you know, as six to seven feet tall with a robust, muscular build. Oh yeah! <laughs> just, I'm telling you, man, those abs, dude. You do. You know he doesn't <laughs> skip ab day. He's got no. the riz. He's got the riz. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's got that muscular build going on. Good job. Look, good, you know, good on you. <laughs> Witnesses often note uh, its imposing stature and broadness of its chest and shoulder. Did you, this is this, this is fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> this is erotic fan fiction. He's a hot moth. He's a hottie with a he's a hottie with a body. <laughs> this is the second time this is coming out. This is crazy. <laughs> so he's got like instead of like moth wings, he's got these large bat wings that. I don't know how you could say that they span like uh, uh, they're approximately ten to fifteen feet. I mean, he's feet. basically I mean, I, Batman, right? He could be, but like, I mean, there is a moth man. Too. I mean, like, does is his bones hollow like a bird? So yeah, like, what would be the weight distribution? For yeah, because like, like ten thing? feet. That's like somebody is six to seven feet tall, and then the, oh man, I just I'm not a ma- I don't I'm not mathy. Yeah, he might not have that six pack. That might be too heavy <laughs> to be flying around with. He's got all that Mothman dick. He's got to be. He's got to be a lot. He's got to be a lot leaner, <laughs> right? So, and then uh, witnesses also report that the wings they don't flap during flight. So it's just like he appears to glide smoothly okay. through the air out there trying to steal your bitch. Okay. Do you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the UFO that has been sighted recently, where it looks like a man with a helium pack. The oh, um, jetpack guy, yeah, jetpack guy, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. Like, but this is 1966. That would have been this would have been the fucking Rocketeer, right? <laughs> it does look like the Rocketeer. Both of those do. But the wings and this, the it's a eye, CIA op. it's an op. One of the most distinctive features of Mothman is his eyes. So almost every person that comes in contact with him describes like glowing bright red eyes uh, that emit like hmm. hypnotic light and they you're get pink eye. yeah that's the thing too that happened that, that happens that happened. to one woman she looked at mothman and got pink eye yeah which is weird but maybe like it's just such an intense burn and somehow it's it got those infected. abs they're above <laughs> washboard maybe she was trying to get a good look at that tramp stamp Ooh, it's little... <laughs> yep Maybe he's just really high. He's at night a lot of times too. But people do theorize that it is like a owl or a large bird. Mm, oh, okay. Okay. A big hoop. Yeah. It does look like an owl. That's true. Well, and that's so. Also, the description a lot of times is that it doesn't look like it has a, a neck or a distinct head. Mm-hmm. The eyes are kind of like set almost into the chest. A lot of times, people describe it as so, like an owl. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Like a cicada. Mm. cicada. Oh. Ugh, that's even creepier. A cicada, man. Ugh. He just goes, he makes that fucking noise all the time. Oh, yeah, no, it scuttles everywhere. Mm. <laughs> you know, more about the Mothman's body. He's typically said to have be covered in dark, smoother, slightly matted fur or feathers, you know, just depending on who you're talking to. 
and it's it's said to be sleek or streamlined. No, his colors range from dark gray to black, and his legs are often reported to be strong and muscular. <laughs> He's got that get, beach body, yo. He's yo, ready. he doesn't skip leg day. <laughs> Capable of powerful jumps or leaps. <laughs> and then some people say he's got like claws or, or talons on his feet, adding to his bird like or bat like appearance. I feel like you're writing his dating profile. So, and then, like, you know, just, just a huge Tinder profile for the Mothman. I was just going to say, a lot of people describe this as otherworldly. I feel like we're describing it as like dateable. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> There are zero red flags for me. No, not even the eyes. <laughs> My definition of tall, dark, and handsome right there. <laughs> and like we said, it's people feel that. like they're overwhelmed with a sense of fear or dread <laughs> during or after. Sometimes this persists for days or weeks after. Um, many reports, many people report having nightmares of tragic things happening, happening. That's part of where the prophecies come in. So a lot of people were dreaming about bad things happening in the town. Oh, yeah. So there's like that people also like get, you know, physical symptoms like the pink eye that one lady got. People got nauseous, dizziness, headaches, um, and just a general feeling of just bleh after encountering the Mothman, which is kind of weird if he's like the perfect man, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> That's the flag. There you go. I get close to him. There's a red flag. Radiation Um, poisoning. Oh, yeah. Uh, So the people that got, like, pink eye and whatever, it was likely due to, like, his glowing red eyes. Um, And then there was also one thing that I heard that somebody was saying that, like, if he was an interdimensional being, then, like, maybe he would give off some sort of different energy and it would, like... Like radiation, yeah. Yeah, like, just fuck with your eyes or something. But I don't yeah, know. I'm not not a perfect. scientist. Yeah. And he's then, like, less, yeah, he's not a bad guy. He's just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> Poor so, guy. Like, people like ended up getting like PTSD like symptoms after they would see him because they were just so terrified and like it was just a traumatic experience from him. Horrible. That's the focus of the movie. Okay. Is like the basically uh, the town. Like everyone's seeing these things, no one wants to talk about it. The police officers don't want to talk about it or admit it. And like, you know, and Keel or Klein's going around, and he's, you know, the linchpin. Everyone's talking to him. No one asks. Yeah. Huh. That sounds pretty good. So, what is the time period for all of this stuff? When did this first start happening? So the first sighting of Mothman was November twelfth, nineteen sixty-six. So. 10 days after Derenberger's contact with Indrid Cold. Uh, a group of men were out in a cemetery digging a grave in West Virginia when they saw a man-sized creature rapidly moving through the trees. And then just a few days later after that, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Stephen and Mary Mallette encountered Mothman driving near the TNT plant. So... I just lost my place on that. But this is the TNT place. Really? Oh, That's yeah. interesting. That's yeah, super I was creepy. expecting like an old, like big, like industrial factory. Not yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> no, it's like a bunker type situation. I guess which makes sense if you're blowing shit up. It's a collection yeah. of bunkers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they're like spread out all over this property. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Pretty creepy. Yeah, I'd though. like to have a bunker. That would be. Sick. I would go check it out. Yeah, man. Go see if Mothman's there. Like, really? You can just open yeah, the door yeah. and Mothman's just aggressively doing squats. <laughs> it's like in a prison cell. Just, <laughs> just getting jacked. <laughs> what you want? Did y'all know there's a festival in September? There is. We'll talk about that soon. I got that. I want to go. Uh, actually, the guys that I got these things from, so the, my sassy and the two Mothman pictures, they're going to be there. Oh, nice. Yes. They gave me, like, their ticket and shit, so uh, maybe nice. I'll try to get to West Virginia. Who knows? Yeah, I love this friends. Fantastic. Uh, so this couple, well, these two couples, were driving around this area by the TNT mm-hmm. plant um, around midnight when they saw a creature with glowing red eyes and a wingspan of about 10 feet. The couple was terrified, and they sped away from the creature. Now, they say 
they were going about a hundred miles an hour and this creature was keeping up with them like emitting like a screeching sound but not flapping its wings <laughs> yeah but like just like a jet just flying cruising next to them not flapping interesting <laughs> they note or one of them notes that while they were like entering this area they had seen a dead dog on the side of the road and then when they had left the area the dead dog was gone so people also like think maybe if the mothman was like eating this dog it like ran them off like just enough to like, yeah. get out like you know like a big cat would do with prey like yeah. just runs them off and it comes back and starts eating again because it probably could have crashed their car if it wanted to if it was keeping up with them i think oh it yeah get them off yeah, or at least like made contact with it and like yeah landed on top of it and yeah he could have probably done way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like he just wanted to get them out of there. So it wasn't just the you know two couples that had an experience. Nearly a hundred other eyewitness reports came in between November nineteen sixty six and December sixty seven. So pretty much like throughout the next the year. People mm -hmm. were describing seeing the same creature with glowing red eyes, and then the the sightings were often, you know, accompanied by a lot of other unexplained phenomena, like lights in the sky, odd sounds, and malfunctioning electronics. That just sounds like UFOs to me. Like that's mm -hmm. your classic. Like that's all that happens when you're yeah, you know, right? in the presence of a UFO. Yeah. yeah. The phone calls are interesting to me. Right, because uh, not only did Derenberger's family get phone calls, like other people received weird sounds and stuff on the other end, mm -hmm. like, and like that—that that to me is like poltergeist stuff. Like they're manifesting the energy enough to like make static on the other side of the phone. Well, that I mean, they were on Cornstalk's cursed land. Exactly. Who knows? They fucking Native American ghosts just fucking with you. No. Right. Yeah, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Nope. So this is around the time. I mean, you know what? I'm good. Never mind. <laughs> I don't need that bad medicine. I'm out of here. No, no, no. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just take off and fly away without flapping my wings. I got some squats yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> this is where enter John Keel. So now he gets on the scene in Point Pleasant and he starts mm -hmm. investigating the Mothman sightings. And those strange sightings. So he is literally from weird people coming to your door, sightings of lights, he, people hearing sounds, people having nightmares, people coming in contact with the Mothman. Uh, he basically annoys the town. Like there's there's people that are like upset with him. He's that he's a like menace to these people's <laughs> and, lives. And people <laughs> suggest that he's the reason. Like that, this is happening. Like, yeah. Why are you going around talking to everybody while all this is happening? And you seem like the only one that's like interested and not scared. Yeah. So, like I said, he eventually leaves the case after receiving like a bunch of phone calls. They contain cryptic messages, and like, like I said, his his theory was that this creature was somehow trying to warn people of future events. Like in 67 is when the bridge collapsed. That's what most people know the Mothman's the bridge. prophecy. That's why yeah, we yelled the bridge before. that? A lot of people had dreams okay. Okay. beforehand mm -hmm. about a terrible bridge collapse. Okay. To the point where they were, they voiced it. Like people were talking about it amongst themselves in the town. It wasn't just like a, oh, afterwards people were like, oh, I had a dream about that. No, it was yeah. like, hey, I had this dream. It's really weird. And the person's like, oh, I had the same dream. That's it's really like weird. It's like they had a shared dream. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why people were saying that like the Mothman was trying to warn them of the bridge. But then, I don't know. You can also think about it this way. Like this bridge was built in the 1920s. Cars were just becoming a thing and nobody would have expected cars to like catch on so like cars obviously just got bigger and bigger and weighed more so like an old bridge from the 20s can't support all those cars yeah i mean that's a good theory too the other theory is um it's all real and he did that on purpose to make people believe him Maybe. it could be 
But what's really yes. interesting is like not even like if like somebody with a lot of experience is like inspecting bridges and whatnot, they would have never saw that like this minute mistake would have caused this bridge to like collapse. Because yeah. yeah. usually like when you're building a bridge, you have like you've got all these different beams and whatnot. So if a beam goes and like gets fucked up, the mm -hmm. stress and the weight and everything is evenly dispersed through the other beams. Well, that wasn't that didn't happen here. Bridges scare me, man. Yeah, I've, never liked, I've never liked bridges. Oh man, and there's like a an amusement park. I think it's in Virginia, and it, they have like a wooden roller coaster. That's terrifying. I'm okay on that. I've been on wooden roller coasters. Don't you guys have that bridge? Don't you in North Carolina? Is it North Carolina? Well, in South Carolina, in Charleston, there's a, a big bridge. That's like close they, to the water. Yeah, it goes like yeah. over the water, and then there's like yeah, it's like this area. So it's really yeah. funny you brought that up. So one of the dreams that I would have was uh, being was being on that bridge. Actually, Ooh. that was one yeah. of my nice dreams. That's scary. I love it's Charleston such a though. Bridge. And so I lived there for a year, and I just never I tried to never ever cross the bridge. But there's a, a new bridge now that's been built. But it was very the very safer. Because well, 46 people lost their lives on the Silver Bridge. God, really? Damn. Yeah. R.I.P. That's really scary. Uh, and then what after... Yeah. Seriously? What was that? Well, maybe they were abducted. Ooh. <laughs> maybe they all went to Lanulos. Maybe. They all went to Lanulos. <laughs> the rapture. Maybe we're just getting raptured. The picture that you have up, it looks like Mothman's flying over the bridge, but it's just like a black <laughs> <Now he> spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it's, that was on a black it's bottom. supposed to be Mothman. This is one of the pictures they say could potentially be him. But yeah, uh, I was like, that's probably like a leaf closer to the lens. <laughs> it's a smudge on the lens. Right. Oh. I hate being a UFO person. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's always telling me I'm wrong. No, there's no video or picture that will ever convince anyone. It has to be personally experienced. Right. Somebody. Well, what's interesting is like Mothman is like reported not only in West Virginia but like all over the world, especially in Chicago a lot lately. But yeah, it's because I, like a bunch like of city people angel. don't know what a bird is. Doesn't that look like an angel or a gargoyle or something? Yeah, or a Mothman. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's got like pretty tiny legs. I don't think our Mothman <laughs> right. No, that's not the same guy. Legs. <laughs> In Point Pleasant, that was kind of the end of Mothman until more recently. There's been a few sightings in the last few years. But like Josh was saying, people report to Mothman mm -hmm. all over the place, from Germany. And a lot of times, they're also connect he's also connected to like disasters, so more mine collapses. He was involved, potentially, or named when it came to Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Blame like, the Mothman. Right. But people say they saw him before they saw they saw a black bird of Chernobyl. That's crazy. Who knows? Maybe they're just like a. I think Jamie, you'll like this. Okay. Maybe they're a man, a physical manifestation of all the people's like predictive negative energy. Ooh. So, like, if one place is ha going to have a disaster happen, and for whatever pe Ooh. people are sensing it, yeah, enough people concentrate, they physically <gasps> manifest the Mothman. Interesting. Yeah, maybe it's like our higher selves getting together and manifesting something that will protect mm -hmm. the group. I mean, I feel like if he's trying to warn people, he should just be like, Hey man, the shit's about to fucking collapse. You should get out of here. But what if what if it's gonna sound like don't use the bridge? Yeah. Well, like what if you're an energy being? How how else can you do it besides appear to people in a shared dream? Really? The eyes. Yeah, I mean. You know? Uh, use yeah. your powers for good, Mothman. Use them for good. Yeah. So do we leave out anything? There's not I don't know, anything man. Really Painted a pretty good picture of his fucking body. Yeah, I think we, did, yeah. Yeah, I think we got a whole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Libby has been into this for years and years. Nice. Sure. When did you do you know like how many years ago you started getting into it? 
Well, it was the release date of Fallout 76 when he was he was a character in that mm -hmm. game. I was gonna um, say, well, you can just like come across him, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I love the little movie. Easter eggs in the Fallout games, like you can come across like the downed UFO and all that shit. Yeah, and injured. Yeah, injured Colts. Yeah, injured Colts. Yeah, injured Colts in it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I never. I just barely played some of the Fallout games just recently because of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got but, back into it. No, I got banned from Call of Duty. What? <laughs> I didn't do shit. Recently? Like the other... So, all right. Time out. Before we get into any of this stuff. Like, I'm going to tell you about my day yesterday. You're right? so mad about this. I'm going to tell you about my day. Dallas. Normal day until about 4 o'clock uh -huh. in the afternoon, right? Then, try to go online. Can't get online for Call of Duty. That's weird. Okay, sometimes that happens. Blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't worry about it. Dinner time comes around. We're trying to order dinner. Christy tells me what she wants. I hear what she wants, but it's not what she wants. I heard something else. So I order the food. The food comes. It's not what she wants. Great. So now we have this whole pizza that no one wants to eat because it's not a pizza that anybody wants anymore. So I order her more food. I go to the place to pick up the food for her. I ordered other food from the first place, right? So I ate that. It was okay. Cool. Last night at like, I don't even know what time. It was like one o'clock. I woke up with the worst food poisoning. Oh, oh no. I like, I'm sorry. For, like, Christy was like, you're gray. I was just dripping sweat. Oh, no. She, so she said, I, so I didn't, I didn't know this. She said, I woke her up by like yelling in my sleep. Oh, no. And then I woke up and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, my stomach really hurts. And that's all. So I was yelling in my sleep because my stomach hurt. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. And then, you know, apocalyptic things happen oh, <laughs> it was terrible yeah i fell asleep on the bathroom floor with the fan in my face it was fucking oh, God. horrible it was so the worst i've had in a long time oh, my God. It sounds horrible. Yeah, exactly. I so, right now with us. yep and i still can't play call of duty so <laughs> fuck me <laughs> Damn. play some fallout instead go see mothman yeah, yeah. Exactly. we're back at native american curses um so yeah I think these things are directly attributed to the curse of Cornstalk. This was 1928. Uh, the bridge basically collapsed with a guy's like delivery truck on it, and he fell through and died. Mm. Just fucking Looney Tune style. Whoop. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, that's sad. Yeah, it's sad. Mm -hmm. So this was the one in 1968. 25 coal miners in Nicholas County were trapped in the mine. Um, 21 of the miners were actually rescued, but four of them perished. So only four of them died. Because right. These were all the guys trapped in their shit. Okay. Yeah. And so this one, this one sounds horrific. Um, is that a tornado? Or is that a fire? No, it's, it's a fire. So oh. 78 miners were entombed by an explosion in the Farmington Number no. 9 mine. Mountaineer Coal Company, I guess that was a company. Uh, their hope for their lives vanished last night when the raging fires prevented any start of rescue operations mm. so like jamie said also the mothman festival it's not all bad nah <laughs> yeah cool shit it's kind of like my blob fest but for mothman have you ever gone no so we could go it's One time september 21st and 22nd i don't think i'm actually here but i yeah aren't you yet? anybody else got anything to add to the immediate topic of the mothman I mean, he's definitely a cultural icon. And yes. one, I need to read Oh, yeah. Book. I need to read He was book. in the X Files. <laughs> he was in the X Files. But, but in like that episode, it's like, like the movie. Right? Mm -hmm. like, the yeah. Men. Okay. That kind of makes men's. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense <laughs> if there's more than just one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes you think. I don't know. There's a lot of philosophies. Like we talked about a few of them already. The native american twist is it just a curse on the land is he an actual just cryptid and we just don't know what he is yeah is he a crossover from another dimension who knows is he a, an evolved bigfoot that grew wings Ooh. <laughs> now that would be a menace <laughs> just add and just mixing cryptids together yeah definitely it, not a squanch isn't that a kaiju squonk 
<laughs> the most depressing cryptid ever. I just say, like, the whole Mothman story, I think what really is, like, important to me is, like, we live kind of near the Appalachian Mountains. Not really, but, like, we live near the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, it's just, like, they turn this awful tra- tragedy into something good. Like, this is a tiny town, and they have tens of thousands of people coming every year and spending all their money. Mm-hmm. Just shows, yeah. like, tenacity of the people around here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how we can No, that's that. awesome. That's, that's a really good point. Is that, like, yeah, they, they could have totally turned this into, like, a don't come here. Yeah. yeah. Bad yeah. shit happens. Super but instead, great. they're like, no. like Let's hey. embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Wave so your true. freak flag. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good take. That's a good point. Yeah. Shake your they, man wings. Is honestly, I would well, probably mom, not know mom. where Point Pleasant is if it wasn't for Mothman. Right. Yeah, like, so we quite literally put him on the map. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Mothman out of the way. It's like I'm like happy and sad. I was gonna say it's you. You want more? Or we I know. To- <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> so I, as I was doing this, oh. I did like. There is another angle. I'll put it that way. There's an angle to to go over all the flaps, and I think it would be fun. Yeah. Because uh, it goes from like Connecticut to West Virginia to Louisiana. There's stuff seen. So. Can you just say flaps for me one more time? Flaps. I got these flaps. You need some flaps. <laughs> Lippity flap flaps. Watch my Mothman flap. Hey, if you got any flaps, you can email them to us at sosospodcast at gmail.com. We'll take your flaps. All the flaps you can give us. <laughs> no. Flaps and slaps. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. No. Thank you. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. As always. Yeah, yeah a lot of fun. fun. Thanks for having me and Noah. Of course, yeah, anytime. Thanks for showing up. It was cool. Thank you. Anytime. You made it. Wait, you can. You can hear Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> uh oh. I think Mothman got him. Uh, what happened now? Who knows? I hope nobody got pink eye. <laughs> I can't get them back. They're gone. Dun, dun, dun. Damn. Oh, poor uh, one out for them. Right? Oh, They're back. God. This is water. Wait, what's, oh my God. Oh, no. what's happening? I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm in the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Mothman came listening. in and aggressively did squat. If you well, well if you're still here, thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Thanks for listening. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah. Email us at sospodcast at gmail.com. For more behind-the-scenes updates and exclusive insights about SSOS, make sure to follow us on social media. And don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, thank you for listening to the Secret Society of Strangers podcast. This show is an independent production, researched and crafted by our passionate team. But we couldn't do it without all of you. We truly appreciate your support. Embrace the unknown, for not all secrets are meant to be kept. Farewell, strangers.